Hello my friends, how are you doing? Today I have a tutorial specifically for the artists among you and this is how to remove the background from a physical drawing that you've done with a pencil or a pen for example. Also right after that I will do a gear review for a controller that you can use on your PC that is specifically designed for editing photos and being creative. It's really interesting so please check that out. And let's get started with this tutorial here. I will show you in three different cases with three different complexities on how to do that efficiently. So the first one is rather easy and one thing to point out here is that when you do the drawing you want to look for having the biggest contrast between the paper and the pen. So ideally of course white paper black pen because this will make it a lot easier to make the drawing afterwards digital and remove the background. Also another thing you want to look for is that you have a very even light. Ideally you want to have two light sources from the left and from the right so they will remove both of the shadows from both sides not only on the paper but also in the structure of the paper so that that also is not there and it looks completely flat. Good. After you've done that and open up the picture in Affinity Photo the process is rather simple. So here's the simplest case. You have a really good image here with high contrast. So what you're going to do is select the layer, then go over there to blend ranges, open that up. And here you have the source layer ranges. You click here in the middle and then just pull this side down. And you can see for control, I have put a rectangle in the background. This is also something you might want to do. So simply go over here to re your rectangle tool, draw out the rectangle, maybe over all of the background and have it in a high contrast color, like a light blue or a green or a pink, stuff like that. And then you can zoom into your drawing and you can see what is taken away and what is kept. And you can see when I don't see my blue in the background, this means I have some part of the paper left. As you can see up here where suddenly the blue is getting foggy. So this is really, really helpful as you can see here. Also you can move over this side to also eliminate the brighter parts of the paper completely. So to clean it up, be a little bit careful that you don't remove too much. This brings us already to our next example here. And as you can see, this is a little bit more complex because we have a lot more grace in here. So again, select your layer, go to your blend ranges, create that point here and move the other point down. So now at this point, you want to zoom in here and you want to decide for yourself which of these are actually part of the drawing, which of them are part of the paper and what do you want to remove. And depending on how you move these two points here, as you can see, this will keep more of the grace and this here will eat up more of the gray values, giving you a cleaner and sharper look at the same time, maybe removing a lot of your artistic finer details. So you have to balance out the position of these two points to figure out how you want to remove the background. Now let's go on to our third case. And here we have a color picture. Now this might be tricky because colors have different brightnesses as you can see here. For example, a yellow is brighter than a red or an orange. So when you have that kind of problem, what you can do is that you create an adjustment over here for black and white. And with this, you can see you have different colors here and you can decide now how bright they should be. So I can, for example, make the red a lot darker. I can also pull down the yellow here and play around with the other values here to see if this gives me any kind of benefit. Now, of course, again, we want to use the blend ranges. But to do that, we can't apply that to the picture. We have to apply it to both of these layers. So that means we will select both of the layers and then create a group, control G on your keyboard like that. Now with the group created, again, we go here to the blend ranges and then do the same process, but we are not finished after doing the process. There's more steps involved. So you can see we have a beautiful removal here of the background. Let's again create here our little 
test rectangle in the background you can see now you can really adjust that finely to whatever you want to have here and by the way look out so you don't get these lines around the edges if you see that try to move the points so they are not there and you get a nice clean cut out like this after you've created that what you want to do is to create a mask so to do that hold the control key and click on your group this will create a selection for you as you can see and then go here to mask layer click on that and this will create a mask layer now you want to first of all remove the selection control d to do that then move the mask out from that and after we have done this you can use the picture and also pull that out of your group you can also leave it in the group if you want to and just create a copy of that control j like so and then move that out from here and as you can see the mask is already working, but you can also drag the mask onto your layer like this. So you get this short blue line, not the long blue line like so. And like this, as you can see, we have efficiently removed the background and at the same time preserved a lot of very nice details. At this point, I want to remind you to join my live stream tomorrow, Sunday, 8 p.m. CST, where we will look in Affinity Photo on how to edit your photos and make them stand out. Let's start with the gear review. Today, I want to review a genius little device that is called the Toolbox, and that is this little thing here. Now, I'm not affiliated with them. They didn't pay me for that, but I was always interested. How much does this actually help? And you might wonder, what is this actually? Well, this is a controller that you can program with all kinds of shortcuts to control all kinds of different software. For example, for photo editing, for digital painting, for music editing, for video editing, for music productions, lots of different ways you can apply this thing here. But why would you use that if you have a keyboard in the mouse and all of that worked so great all of these years? Well, the thing is, as you know, shortcuts can be very cumbersome. Sometimes you need both of your hands and also for some of them, you need to press them and adjust the thing. For example, the tool you want to work with and then you can use the tool. Here you can, for example, adjust the brush size while you're painting, which means you can have a very dynamic stroke and this will allow you to go into new ways of creativity. So this can actually enhance what you can do with your software, but also it will keep you in the flow of creating rather than trying to search what is the right shortcut. Now, here's another thing that I really like about this design. If you look at this device, you can see that all of the buttons are designed completely differently from how they feel and how they look. Now that's a huge benefit. And the reason for that is because you can use that without having to look at the device. You can feel blindly what is going on. That is very, very good because you want to stay in the flow and not look at the device to figure out what you're doing. So blind usage is very important for the artistic flow of juices. Another thing is that this has a soft rubber surface, so it is nice to the touch. It has a good weight, which means it does not float around on your screen. This is actually staying in place also because of the four rubber feet. And it has a sturdy build quality, so you can take this with you on journeys. For example, if you like to edit your photos while you're on a trip, while you go out with your laptop, you want to adjust your photos, you can do that and bring this with you. So this is really good. Also, for example, maybe for uh, working on the go or travel vlogging, lots of different reasons why you want to use that. Another thing that is very important here is, for example, if you have a pen display, like for example, a vacuum display, a Huion display, all these kinds of things, usually they will use up your desk. So where you usually have your keyboard and your mouse. With this, you just have it next to your display. You don't even need a keyboard at that point or a mouse because you can just use your pen to adjust your images, to do a digital painting, and then to all of the things at the same time with these buttons. So for example, what you can do here is you can use this mouse wheel for zooming. You can use this bigger dial here for rotating the canvas and you can use this one here for adjusting the size of your brush. 
and then these other buttons, for example, for switching in between different tools or for going back a step if you want to creating a new layer. Anything that can be done with a shortcut can be programmed into this thing. And by programming, I don't mean coding. I mean you go into the software that's included with this device and just set up the shortcuts that you want to use with the software. And also a good benefit of this tool is it recognizes when you change between different software tools so that you always have the shortcut that are required by that software. So if you, for example, switch in between Affinity Photo and Affinity Publisher, this will recognize that and switch the shortcuts over for what you have programmed in these different software applications to be used. So that's pretty awesome. Let's talk about some downsides here. I don't just want to praise this thing. So there is some room for improvement, of course. One thing that I think could be get better is, well, this thing has 11 buttons, which is really nice. You also have a cursor here, you have these dials, and you can also press these dials. So these are additional buttons. So actually you have 14 buttons and three dials, but each of these buttons is just a button. What I mean by that is when you press it, it either is on or off. It has a value of zero or one. It is not pressure sensitive and it's also not touch sensitive. And I think that could be improved with some of the buttons because for example, pressure sensitivity would be very nice to, for example, adjust the opacity of a brush very softly by how hard you press the button. Or the touch sensitivity would be nice when I move my finger over that, for example, I can resize something, I can zoom into the picture, stuff like that. Also, none of these buttons here have different pressing areas. Even this one up here is just one button, so it doesn't give you a different signal on the left side or the right side. So this could maybe be improved. But on the other hand, what the software can do is that you can also set up button combinations. So this is not limited by the amount of buttons you see here, but by the amount of combinations you can create. So this is one function, this is a second, and both of them, this is a third function that you can program in here. Also, I think the price could be a little bit lower. So the price right now is okay, but I would think that a lot more people would pick this up for 99 bucks because that would be for me the sweet spot where I think, yeah, that's great. On the other hand, if you think about it, this is a very sturdy built device with a lot of functionality. And if you think about all the nerve you're saving, all the time you're saving and how much you keep in the workflow, and you know for artists how important it is to stay in the workflow and create when you have the inspiration, when you have the idea, this might well be worth the money because I think this will stay with you for many years and enhance your productivity by a lot. So. All in all, I would say this is something I would suggest you might want to buy if you're interested in that. I will keep using it, of course, because I already have it. So thanks for watching my review and see you in my next video. Bye.